Political rants and raves, the British petroleum oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, you're probably hearing about this all over the news recently. It's been a top story, and for a very good reason. You know, this was a huge disaster. You know, it's interesting. This rig that sunk, blew up, went to the bottom of the ocean, it was named the Deep Water Horizon. This was like the Titanic of the oil industry, like the Lusitania. This thing just blew up and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. You're talking about a terrible loss of life. Eleven workers died. These people had families. Families have been wrecked. And then you're talking about maybe hundreds of millions of dollars of damage, oil that's been lost. And now you have a disaster that's following another disaster with all the oil, how to contain it. It's spreading all over the place. They're saying it's going to reach the Florida Keys. It's wrecking the fishing industry especially how bad the economy is now. We have another industry that's going to suffer as a result of this. They're going to contaminate the beaches. You're looking at who knows countless amounts of money that's going to be needed to clean this stuff up. It's just a huge disaster. Now, after disasters like this happen, you're always saying, who do we blame, right? So people are saying it's British Petroleum's fault. People are saying that maybe it's other oil companies' faults. They're mentioning Halliburton. Well, other oil companies that were supposed to have a safety measure in place that in case this does happen, the oil can be contained. It triggers a containment unit by having a dead man switch and it didn't go off. So they're blaming a few oil companies for this. Now they had these Senate hearings with the people on the head of British Petroleum, people on the head of Halliburton, people on the head of other oil companies, and they're all pointing fingers at each other. It's your fault. It's your fault. You know, we'll take care of it. We'll clean up the mess. But the bottom line is, What's going to happen here? You know, we need a solution. Now, a few solutions have been mentioned. One is stop offshore drilling. Just stop it. If it's stopped, this won't happen again. Now, of course, if you stop it, oil prices are going to go up. The oil that we've been extracting from other places is drying up, so that's why we're doing this in the first place. So this might not be a solution. Another solution is overseas drilling. Well, We've been doing this for a while, you know, for a long time. When you're talking about overseas drilling, you're usually dealing with countries that are unstable, that are third world countries. They're going every day from one dictator to another dictator, one war to another war. Every time there's more instability, we can get the oil, oil prices go up, especially if you're depending on this. It's just the very reason why we're doing this offshore drilling. So this may not be a solution either. Then you're talking about government oversight. Okay, let's continue the offshore drilling, but well, let's have government inspectors watch these guys see what they're doing. Okay, great. What has government oversight done recently? Look at the financial crisis. Look at what's been happening with the bailouts, all this money, where is it being spent? All right, so government oversight, this may not be a solution either. And then, of course, green technology is spoken about. We have new measures of using different technologies to get energy, such as solar, wind turbines, stuff like that. Now that's great. I love that. It doesn't pollute, it's clean, and most of all, it's free. How could you beat that? I'm all for green technology, but here's the problem. All they do is talk about it. It's not being perfected, they're not investing in it, or maybe they don't know how to make it more efficient. It's just not efficient. You can plaster your house all over with solar panels. And they say you're only going to get about 60% of the energy that you need. So it's just not efficient. Wind turbines are big, they're expensive too. Where are you going to put this thing in your backyard? And basically, if there's no wind, you don't get any energy. So, you know, these things just might not be a solution. Maybe in the future they'll be, but this is an immediate need. We can't talk about the future anymore. And here's why. This country uses 19,498,000 barrels of petroleum products every day. 8,989,000 barrels of gasoline, 328 million gallons every day. You're talking about, this is unheard of, how much this country uses. This is enough to fill up a river. It's crazy. I mean, you could, you could possibly make a river out of all this stuff. Here's another alarming statistic. If you don't know this, this is insane. The United States makes up less than 5% of the world's population, yet we use 25% of the world's energy. That's ridiculous. I mean, you know, this is the United States. It's not even Europe. 
I mean, Europe is the mother country of the United States, and they're not even using this much oil. And this is what I'm driving at right here, the solution to the problem. I'm going to show you the solution to the problem, and I'm not going to even say anything. Just give me a second. Here, my friends, is the solution to the problem. There you go. Looks good too, right? What do, you, what do you think? Does that look good? It even looks good. The solution to the problem is to cut back. There is no need. There is no reason to use all this oil. It's ridiculous. And you could just see it. It's evident. You see these people driving these massive SUVs. And you would think, okay, yeah, there's a lot of people in the SUV. But I was bicycling the other day in the city, okay? And this huge SUV turned the corner nearly ran me over and I just looked inside to see who was inside this SUV it was like a 90 pound woman talking on her cell phone I mean this is why we're having this issue here people are just negligent they're using oil like it's water and literally like water like I just said 328 million gallons a day I mean that's like using gasoline like you do water enough to fill up a river every day I mean let's face it the average American family what do we have we have a boy, a girl, and a dog, right? So you're talking about, what, a family of five? <laughs> I mean, that's enough to fit into a compact car. You need a room, put stuff in the trunk. You need additional room, get a roof rack. I mean, these huge SUVs are the problem. And then, of course, there's another issue here, okay? You're talking about people that don't even belong on the road. Most people you see driving, they're not even going anywhere. They're just driving. They don't even know where they're going. That's ridiculous. Driving is not a leisure thing. It's a means of transportation. I mean, you know, recently I was riding my bike. This old lady nearly ran me over. She was looking this way and driving that way. I think even if she was looking straight, she probably couldn't even see. The regulations to get a driver's license, okay? If you basically know how to chew gum and walk straight at the same time, you can get a driver's license to drive around in this 5,000 pound killing machine, not even knowing what you're doing. They have to strengthen the regulations, make it tougher to get driver's licenses. They have to clean up these roads. People have to get on their bikes. Okay, think about the other things which will be eliminated. 60% of this country is obese. That's a problem. Then you're looking at all the health care related issues as a result of this. People need more health care because they're getting sick. And then they want me to pay for it. You know, people that are in shape, that are healthy, to pay for their health care. I mean, that's socialism. It's just wrong. What has to be done is these people have to get healthier. They have to start walking more, take bicycles. And you want me to be honest with you? I would love for this to happen, but it's probably not going to. It's probably not going to happen. People are just not going to change the way they do things. This generation is toxic. Probably the only solution is the future. The education system is the key. Children have to be taught that this is wrong. That oil, which they call the black gold, has to be treated like gold. Would you take gold and just throw it away like water? Of course you wouldn't. It has to be looked upon as gold. It's a precious commodity. It has to be treated with care. It has to be treated as if it has to be preserved. And this is the solution. The next generation has to be taught that this is wrong. Oil has to be treated like a precious commodity. And we wouldn't have the problems that we do today. This will solve everything, less people in their cars, healthier people, less pollution. I don't know if you know this, 20,000 premature deaths in New York State alone are related to pollution. This is a report that came out. I mean, it's all directed to people driving too much. This is the key. Get on your bike. It's fun. It's a great way to transport yourself. You can actually get to places quicker than you can with a car. It's a great way to get around. That's the solution. They wouldn't need all this drilling because the excessive need for oil wouldn't be there. Anyway, this is a very broad topic. I would like to know how you feel about it. Please leave your comments below the video. Please rate this video and subscribe. And thank you for tuning in.